It's Jamie from Play to Learn Preschool. Thank you for joining me. I am here this afternoon to answer one of the questions that I get the most from people who watch our Facebook videos and from who, whom send us email. And the question is always, can you tell me more about your bulletin boards? Or um, how did you make that bulletin board? And so what I thought I would do today is just kind of give you the lowdown on how we use these vertical surfaces to really enhance our preschoolers learning. So in our classroom, we try to say we have like a math center and a literacy center, but the truth is that we attempt to integrate math, literacy, fine motor skills into all of our centers. We have books in the block center and writing utensils and dramatic play. And wherever we can, we try to do those, you know, double goal lessons. And so I can't say that, you know, this center is just for math. This is just our math center because a lot of times we also integrate fine motor or we have a reading component and it's the same thing for bulletin boards. So it's kind of a gray, a gray area. Our bulletin board tackles different objectives based on the theme or the month or whatever we're doing. It might be math. It might be colors might be literacy. Sometimes we do sort of like an art or a creative bulletin board. But the basic idea is that these vertical surfaces like the one behind me are not just to display our students' work. So we do have some displays you can see above. You can see above me. We have these art hooks all around our room, one for each student for them to display their artwork. We do not use our bulletin boards generally to display the students' artwork. We think of it just like another learning center in our classroom. I have two interactive bulletin boards in my room. The one behind me is made, it's like a cork board. Uh, when we very, the very first time when we opened um, Play to Learn Preschool in 2005, Gemma's husband was actually in an office that was discarding these bulletin boards. And he intercepted them before they made it to the trash. We recovered them with white well, initially they had all different color fabrics, but a few years ago we went to just plain white fabric. This is actually blackout blind fabric. So it's a real thick um, white, I don't know what, canvas fabric, something that I got at the fabric store and we just covered these bulletin boards. I will flip it around in a minute so you can see, but we used a few little bulletin board borders, you know, just like old teachery stuff and changed the bulletin board approximately every month sometimes we're more ambitious and sometimes less ambitious depending on what's going on, to just meet different needs of our students. I left a link in the video description where you can click to see a photo album full of some of the bulletin boards that we've done. What I thought I would do is just kind of talk you through why we use them and some different methods for making it interactive. So if you are an OT, which I am not, um, you will know that vertical surfaces are really good for our students' motor development. Because in addition to being able to write on you know, a flat piece of paper, we need our students to be able to use their wrist motion um, and strengthen that, um, that muscle in their hands so that they can become good writers. One of the ways to do that is by working on a vertical surface with their hands up. That's true with the art easel, and it's true over here at the bulletin board. So that's an added bonus to doing a center on a bulletin board. But the truth is most things that we do on our interactive bulletin board could also be done on a table at a center. So if you do not have the wall space, you can take some of these ideas and do them, you know, on a table center. Vice versa, a lot of table center ideas are like, oh, that would have made a great bulletin board. We'll think of it next time. So the one that's behind me is a shape train. It says, I know it's backwards for you, all aboard the shape train. And in November, we're learning about transportation and really trying to focus on the math skill of identifying and drawing shapes. We did a lot of color sorting in October and in September, we were just really trying to work. I don't know if there's a specific math skill. It was like, how to go to school, is that a math skill? <laughs> um, getting to know each other's names and learning the routines for the classroom. But in November, we're really trying to focus hard on shapes. So this one behind me, this is train track tape. It's like the road tape that you can get um, to put on your block center or on tables and have the kids drive their cars on it, but it's just train track variety. <laughs> and we printed this adorable clip art from Whimsy Clips. I'll leave a link for that after I'm done. And identified each train car with a different shape. 
So the six that we're really trying to focus on in November are hexagon, rectangle, diamond, square, circle, triangle. And what Gemma, she's the bulletin board queen. I wish she was here for this part. Um, what Gemma did was she cut out some different shapes and we're pretending like they're coal or something like that. And she put them in that little container for the kids. So they come over to the container and pick out a piece of coal. We used Velcro dots for this one. Can you kind of see that? And they just have to identify the shape and put it in the correct train car. So easy enough. Um, the You just have to make sure that all of the shapes have the same Velcro sticker. So they're either like all fuzzy or all scratchy, right? Keep them the same so, <laughs> so that it works. And it's very similar if you saw pictures of the interactive bulletin board that we did in October, we did um, a very similar one with pumpkin shapes. So again, this adorable clip art from Whimsy Clips. We programmed each of these hay wagons with a different shape, put Velcro dots on it, and then had little pumpkins in different shapes. That's the wrong shape. Let's pretend like this is the triangle wagon and this is a triangle pumpkin. And it's the same thing where the kids would just identify the shapes. So it's interactive, they can work with their friends, they're negotiating the space, talking to their classmates, and also hopefully practicing identifying their shapes. And in my experience, there are five ways to sort of create an interactive bulletin board. Velcro dots is way number one. Another easy way, if you can manage it, is to do felt. So if you don't have Velcro dots, you can buy big squares of felt for just a few cents at the craft store. This is how we did our late September bulletin board. We made these trees and each tree had a different color felt. I don't know what bush top part on it. There was like red, orange, yellow, green, and brown. And then we found these felt leaves at the dollar store and the students were just um, identifying the colors and then sorting them and sticking them onto the bulletin board. So instead of Velcro, the felt just sticks to another piece of felt, right? So that's the second way to do it. The third way is with thumbtacks. And I wouldn't recommend this if you have younger kids, but our three to five year olds are totally fine or usually fine with thumbtacks. So you can put thumbtacks instead of Velcro dots there, you know, on whatever your bulletin board is. And here's another example. So this is a colors bulletin board that we did in the spring. And we put these crayons up all over the bulletin board. There's some pictures of it in that, um, in that link that I left you. And then under the crayon, we put, I think, three or four thumbtacks. And the manipulatives that the kids used were pictures. And we just added um, a paper clip. But you could do a little thing of string or a little piece of pipe cleaner or whatever. And then the kids would just hang all of the colors to match the crayon. So I think there were, I think there's three of each color. I think there's three. I've just pulled the pile out of my, my interactive bulletin board stash. So they would just hang them with a paper clip on a thumbtack. So that's the third way. The fourth way is you could put it on a popsicle stick and you know, like whatever the, the thing is that they're manipulating. If it's you know, a piece of coal or a pumpkin shape or a color, or whatever they're manipulating, you could stick it to a pump, uh, popsicle stick or a craft stick and then make little pockets and they can just stick it in there. So that's a, a fourth way if you don't have access to Velcro or, I don't know, <laughs> thumbtacks. <laughs> um, you could use little, you know, craft sticks and make like little pockets for them to stick it in. And then the fifth way that I wanna show you is actually over at my other interactive bulletin board. So this one is, like I said, cork board or foam board or something like a traditional bulletin board. And then my other one is a white magnetic board. So I'm gonna take you over there and show you what we have set up at our interactive magnet board. So let's see if the camera and everything will work. So over here in our block area, that was our, um, like our science and discovery area. And then over here in the block area, let's see if this will work, we have an interactive magnet board. I'll change it so it's not obnoxious for you guys to see it backwards. Hold on one second. Let's see. Facebook makes it so tricky. Let's see if that works. Sort of? The light is a little weird over here. Um, so this, 
<laughs> I really am still looking for a camera person. This is our magnet um, board. I got it at Costco. It is, um, I think it's supposed to be like a bulletin board. It's dry erase so the kids can color on it. Sometimes we do like a directed drawing coloring thing and it's also magnetic. I think at Costco it's $15. And what you can do here are any kind of a magnetic activity or like I said, dry erase. So in this one, we have printed off pattern block templates from pre-kinders. I'll come back with a link for those. And I'll, I'll show you what we did now and I'll show you what we do when the kids are a little bit older in the spring. So for this one, we took our set of pattern blocks, which is just like the traditional, every classroom has a set of wooden or plastic pattern blocks, and we made them magnetic. So on the back of each pattern block, we put a little piece of magnet tape. So this is Xyron brand magnet tape. Xyron is X-Y-R-O-N. If you watch a lot of our videos, you'll know that this is my favorite laminating. It's like an adhesive laminate, and we also use it for, um, like to make everything sticky. <laughs> for um, like to apply glue on everything, we use this adhesive. Um, brand Xyron and they make this magnet tape. It comes off like a piece of scotch tape. So you really just pull it and it just comes off like a piece of scotch tape. It's really thin but super sticky and Gemma, God bless her, took all of these home and put magnet on the back of our regular pattern blocks. So then what the kids do when they come over to the center is use these templates and design their transportation or their vehicle on the magnet board. So they're getting that vertical surface practice, also practice with shapes, and with this like visual discrimination and trying to match the shapes and create the cars. Some of you wrote, when I posted pictures of this on Instagram, you wrote, oh, Lakeshore or Learning Resources makes giant magnet blocks. And I, and I thought, yes, they definitely do. This is easier than posting the template and having them make the transportation vehicle with these giant pattern blocks. Because this one, they can match it right up on top of the template, right? And if you just put out these giant pattern blocks, they're not sized the same. So what the kids would have to do is take this template and then create it separately. And that's much a much more difficult skill to sort of use this as a model and then make the same shape. We did it with our pre-K students last spring. We put out some ocean pattern block templates. I think there was a fish and a, mm, maybe there was a whale or a shark or something. And then we put the template out and they had to try to make that shape on the whiteboard. And it's really difficult. So we thought since it's only November, we would do the templates straight on same size as the pattern blocks um, and just have them practice matching it. I posted a video of this on Instagram, I think this morning. My kids love it and they're so successful at it. The magnets are pretty strong. Some people said they were having trouble with their magnet board not sticking or the pattern blocks not sticking, but these just have a tiny little piece of magnet tape, that real thin magnet tape on the back and we don't have any problems with them sliding off. So I'm not sure. It might be your magnet board isn't strong enough or your magnet tape isn't strong enough. I don't 100% know. <laughs> um, but like I said, this one is from Costco. This whiteboard, it was $15 and it serves us really well. So I'm gonna switch back around because I know it looks it looks better for you, but it's a lot more, it's a lot more difficult for me to talk when the, um, the camera is switched because it makes everything look backwards for me. So. Anyway, those are, <laughs> I took the little block that my camera is setting on, so now it's really short. So those are the ideas that I have for you for creating an interactive um, bulletin board. Use Velcro, use felt, use thumbtacks with paper clips or thumbtacks with a little string. You can use magnets or you can use popsicle sticks and stick them in pockets. But Having this vertical surface is fun because the kids can all see each other working on it. Um, they love to work together, which really increases their communication, their oral language, their negotiation and problem solving skills. And it's just really visually cool to have around your room. So I highly recommend interactive bulletin boards. I will continue to post pictures of them in that album. So if you wanna bookmark it and keep up with um, our interactive bulletin boards, and I'll try to get a blog post up too. Um, so that you have a place where you can just kind of scroll through and get some ideas for bulletin boards. 
If you have other questions about it, leave them in the comments and I will log back on and try to answer them. And I also leave those links that I promised. In the meantime, I hope you have an awesome day playing and learning with your kiddos and I'll see you next time. Bye everybody.